Hey guys, welcome to another episode. And I don't know about you, but it's been a long, long week. I guess you could say that I'm well. I'm exhausted. That's right. It's time to work on our exhaust. We have an entire stainless steel exhaust system ready to install in this car. I've got everything out here on the ground, ready to go. Headers all the way down to the muffler in the back. We're gonna be installing this today. I'm so excited to share it with you guys. And in case you haven't noticed, we've got a new set of wheels on the car. We decided on these set of wheels. Make sure you guys check out the video where we looked at all the wheels that are available for our 124s. I'll make sure to put a link in the description down below for that. But we went with all these wheels. They look so good on the car, on the black. I'm obsessed, I love it. But it's about time we jumped in, into here, and get this exhaust started so we can get this thing started and hit the road. Let's get, let's get going. All right, so as we get started here, just point out a couple pieces. We've got our exhaust gasket, and we've also got our headers, our muffler, our long pipe down the middle. We do not run a cat on this one. And we've got our down pipe and a connector pipe here on the end. This is gonna go all underneath the car. It's such a shame, because it's such a nice set. These are all stainless steel. Look at that, you can even see yourself. It's a shame it's underneath the car, but you gotta have the good stuff. Very excited to get this in there. I'm really excited to see what, it's, what it sounds like. Great reviews, very excited. But I think what we're gonna do is we're gonna go to the front. We're gonna start from here at the exhaust and go backwards. That way we can make fitments as we get towards the back in case we have to. And we don't have to go back and forth and back and forth and back and forth. So let's get to the front. We'll start here and go all the way down, back this way, one piece at a time. All right, so the first thing we're gonna wanna do is put our gasket on. So go just like this. Should kinda hang there a little bit. And then we're gonna put our headers on. Be careful not to scratch them because I really, really like them. I'm going to scoot you out of the way maybe a little bit. So I can get you up here. How's that? Can you see? So as you're installing your gasket and your header here, you want to make sure the, the smooth side of the gasket faces the block, the flat side actually goes towards the exhaust and it may not make sense right now but when you have it in your hand it'll totally make sense because there's a rounded portion that is is the smooth side and you'll be able to tell but that that rounded portion goes towards the block so we're going to continue to put these nuts on and tighten them on and get them all installed so the next part we're going to want to install is our down pipe now you could do the header and the down pipe together um, but it's gonna be a little tricky to try and squeeze it between the firewall and the control arms and the cross member. There's a lot going on down there, so it's just easier to do it separate. Now these actually come with an Allen key connection here. All you have to do is slide them up into it, turn those keys to tighten them down, and we're all set. And then we can move on to the single pipe. So this brings it all into one, from a four to a two to a one. Really nice, really shiny set. Like I said, I. I hate that I have to put it underneath the car. It looks so good, but it's where it belongs. All right, here we go. All right, so you can see where our exhaust comes down and you see what I mean about being crowded, trying to do the down pipe um, attached to the manifold. It's gonna be really tough to navigate down here. So what I'm gonna do is do it separate here, get it up off the ground and get up in here. We're gonna come up through this way and join it right there. It's gonna eventually come down this way and across here, you can see it's already got some of the heat shielding from the original exhaust here. Um, so we're gonna get it up there. Nothing really exciting to see. We're gonna slide it over, tighten up those six millimeter Allen key uh, bolts, and we'll see what it looks like so far. All right, so we see we've got that down pipe attached. Super easy, super simple, all the way around here. Looks so good. And of course, it goes all the way up there. We clear our cross member. No problem, and this is still adjustable, so if we do need to kink it back just a little bit, we can to give ourselves a little bit more room. But it looks good here. Um, we have plenty of clearance. I can fit fingers through there. Um, 
and it looks good. We're making progress and we're slowly starting to work our way back. Well, almost there. So the next thing we're gonna do is attach our smaller pipe here. And I'm gonna push it till it's all the way seated. You can see it kind of flares out here. And we also have ourselves a two and a quarter clamp here. And we'll be able to, when I have two hands, put that on there and clamp that together, make sure it's nice and tight. And you'll notice that this actually has kind of an S bend into it. See it kind of curves this way. So all we're doing is we're following the body line of the car. You can see where all this thermal heat shield is and we're just gonna follow that all the way back. So we're gonna get this clamp on and then we're gonna be able to get that next really big section installed. And this is, you can see some of the brackets to where they mount that there. But let's get this clamp installed and then we can move on to the next part. Now that we're ready to install our long pipe here, it's got these tabs that they mount to and these are the ones that are on the exhaust itself. They have these little foam tabs and what's really supposed to go through here is a spring. It looks kind of something like this. Something like this, it's in a little casing. And mine, of course, was old and rusty and broke. So this is what was on the car originally, so I'm gonna have to find myself some new ones. But they mount in here to hold the exhaust up. And because it's a spring, it keeps it nice and flexible and moves um, as needed. But what we're gonna be doing today is just using some uh, mechanics wire just to mock it up for now. We'll be ordering some of these and they'll come in the mail, no problem. And we can just simply snip this and replace it with that. So this is by no means a permanent solution. This is just to get it up there, mock it up, and I can get a, a better measurement of what kind of spring strength, do a little bit of research on these and see what I can come up with. So we're gonna see that this goes forward. And you'll see that our square connection matches with our square connection. And there is a gasket that goes in here. So you'll need four bolts uh, to attach together with that gasket. And uh, you'll be able to mount it here. You might have to have something to hold up the end. If you have an extra jack, something like that to hold up the back. That way it doesn't droop and really pull down on the downpipe up front. So let's start getting this one installed. All right, so we've got it mocked up. We still have this loose. That way we have some room to wiggle some pieces, but we can see how this is coming together. So nice. We're back up and through there. I was able to rest this on the handbrake cable so I didn't have to use my jack. Um, and that kind of helped hold it up while I'm working on it. You can see my awesome temporary, temporary. This is not permanent. This is temporary just to hold it up, uh, to get it up out of the way for now until I do some research on a better connection between these two. But uh, like I said, not permanent. We're all connected. And like I said, this is still loose so that we can still move some stuff around. So now we're onto the final piece with the muffler in the back. It's gonna go up and over the wheel well and meet right there with another exhaust clamp and some more hangers in the back. So let's jump to the back and see it all come together. All right, so here we are in the back with the muffler, nice finished piece, so shiny. And this is gonna go up over our rear axle, right up that way. You can see where our tip comes out. So we're just be going this way. And you can see our exhaust hangers have definitely seen better days and even pieces of old exhaust hangers. And uh, we definitely need to replace these, especially uh, that, because I just want to talk to you. Replace me. Anyway, this is gonna get replaced and uh, we've got some new ones of those. And again, we're gonna kind of run into an issue with the proper kind of attachments for these because these have just the holes in them and there's no real way to directly attach it in there. Um, so we'll have to figure something out and mine look a little different than this, but the same concept. So we're gonna get these out and we're gonna put our new ones in and we're gonna wrestle with this thing underneath and uh, get another exhaust clamp on here and use some of that wire just to mock it up for now, and we'll take a look at how it ends up. Here we go. All right guys, so it's been two, three days, and it's still nice and bright and sunny as you can tell. So we're still gonna continue to work on our exhaust system, but we're gonna continue to do it correctly. Yeah, it was a couple seconds ago for you, but a couple days for me. We did the, the mechanics wire just kind of hold it up, 
but I made sure I put it in order, VicAuto.com. I'll make sure to put it in the description down below. We actually have the proper um, rubber mounts for our uh, muffler on the back, as well as the brackets to attach them. Hopefully the sun doesn't, doesn't wash y'all out, but the proper brackets, the proper rubber mounts. And we also went to the hardware store. We picked up some, some uh, bolts here. We also got some nuts and lock washers, but more importantly, we've got some more springs. In the middle section of our exhaust, we're gonna have to hold up springs. This has got two different sizes, so we'll see which one fits for us. If neither of them fit, I'll show you guys a cool trick on how to adjust these and make them custom fit for you guys, but hopefully we won't have to. Um, if you wanna know how to do that, I'll probably, well, I'll take an old one. I'll show you guys anyway. So in case you do get one that doesn't quite fit, I'll show you a cool trick on how to adjust them to make them fit for your specific needs. Um, so we've got a couple more pieces to finish this up and more importantly, finish it up right. So let's uh, jump back underneath here. We're gonna start right underneath the passenger side door where normally the catalytic converter is, but we still have our brackets there just tied up with mechanics wire. So let's get underneath there and start messing with our springs first and then we'll work our way back. All right, so we're underneath the car. You can see there's a bracket here. The other one is on this side. You can't really see it, but you can see where we're trying to go. So we've got two springs. One is two and a half inches and one is three and a quarter inches long. Both are five eighths in diameter. So we're gonna take a look at both of them. See, they've already got the nice hooks on them. You can see the, the length differences. So what I'm going for is I want one that's not too hyper extended to where it's at max travel, but I also don't want one that's too minimally together because it's not really holding anything on it. So by the looks of it, I think our uh, three and a quarter inch one is gonna be our winner. So we're gonna take our needle nose pliers. I'm gonna bend this up just a little bit. Maybe not, see if we can get it on there. There we go, just like that. We're gonna attach it on the bottom here. Yeah, so that looks good. Um, it's not, you can see there's still plenty of travel left in the spring, but it's also not completely compressed. So we know that that's holding up some tension. And according to the packaging, this spring is rated for 20 pounds each. Each of them is rated for 20 pounds. And this whole exhaust doesn't even probably weigh 20 pounds. So we're gonna put it on the other side, do the same exact thing, and then we can move on to the muffler in the back. All right, so this is the other side. Y'all are gonna be a little crooked, but I want you guys to be able to see this. So you can see this is the two and a half one. That's much smaller, and this is a much closer difference distance. So with our three and a quarter inch one, we're not gonna have any hold on this. So it's good that we got that variety pack so we can put this side on as well. So we're gonna go here first, just like that. So we can see that it's still pretty compressed so what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna remove it and move it up to the second hole. That way there's a little bit more tension on it. And we have real pull on this. That way one side isn't doing all the work. All right, so we've got it on the top. I definitely like this better. You can see what we're, what a full compression looks like. So we know that there's load on the spring and of course there's still plenty of travel for that to flex with the car driving and riding around. So that's much better. All right, so it's gonna be much easier to do it like this underneath the car first is attaching our bracket. And what I'm gonna do is go from underneath, see if we can get some of this foam protector out of the way. Put our bolt through the bottom. That way, whatever excess we have hangs up towards the exhaust. I don't want anything hanging down that could potentially hook on road debris or anything like that. I'm gonna put a washer on the top this rubber will get out of the way. Well, why are you fighting me? All right, so we've got that trimmed. We're gonna slide this back on. Just like that, that's better. 
Now we can put on our bracket. Like I was saying, we like to have the excess through the top, keeps it hidden and doesn't catch anything on the road. Um, that way we don't have any chances of catching stuff to rip this off because that would really, really be bad. The best part about the stuff being stainless is you can see in the reflection actually right here where the nut is getting sucked down. So that's nice. And uh, we're just gonna tighten it up here. Watch the reflection like this. Yep, we're there. Just like that. Now we can put our rubber piece that's on the bracket. Again, through the front. That way nothing is hanging through the front to catch anything. Call me paranoid, but better safe than sorry. Do this. Have our washer and our nut. And we'll be able to tighten it just by hand for now. Um, that way we have some flexibility when it comes to mounting it up here. Now you might need to get a little bit of assistance to lift this up depending on body shape and things like that. So I want to be able to get a jack underneath here and slightly lift up on it. That way I'm not having to push and feed a, a bolt at the same time um, and save my arms because they get tired when you're upside down. I know we've all been there. and that's gonna be it for our exhaust video. It's a very nice exhaust set. It's so shiny, but we have to hide it underneath the car because that's just where it has to go. I don't think I'd like it if it was up over the top, even though it is so shiny. Sad, really. But it's super easy to install, you guys. Um, if I can do it, you can do it. It all fits together so well, perfectly measured out. All you have to get is the exhaust clamps, the hangers, and you're done. Some of the hardware I already had um, in my stash in the back. It's not difficult. If I can do it, you can too. And it looks so good in the car and I can't wait to get it running, to see what it sounds like. And I'm sure it's gonna be amazing. I'm so ready to get this thing started, but we're that much closer. Thank you guys so much for watching. Make sure you like, comment, and subscribe. I really do appreciate it and it really helps me out. Keeps the channel growing and keep us moving down the road with this restoration project and more coming in the future. Just a quick announcement though, we do have Fiat Freakout 2022 coming out. It's in September of this year, which is 2022. Make sure you guys are members of the Fiat Club of America. And make sure you guys go, because I will be there. I cannot wait to see you guys and meet everyone. Um, I'd love to see you and hear about your project and what you're working on. So make sure you guys are there for Freakout. I'm gonna be there, so you better be there. I wanna see you. So thank you guys, until next time, we'll see you.